There's another way to add vectors, but it can only be two vectors, and that's by the parallelogram method. It's an important uh, method to understand because as we continue to study vectors a bit further, and our goal is going to be, let's say we have a plane that's heading 450 miles per hour in an easterly direction, but the wind's out of the southwest, how is that wind affecting the direction and the speed of the plane? And what we're going to do is we're going to draw pictures of the wind and the plane with a line and an arrow. And we're going to put their tails together to create a parallelogram. So again, used for two vectors. We did this first question on the previous page, and I just want to demonstrate it again. We drew vector A. I'm trying to draw it about the length of this line. That's what I'm attempting to do. Then we took the tail of vector B, put it to the head of vector A, and drew a line that's B at the same angle and about the same length is my goal. And then the result of adding these two vectors was from the tail of the first to the head of the last. So that's the answer to this problem. So the result is right here. I'm going to go ahead and put B right here. Well, I want to do the very same problem, but I'm going to do it off to the side here. And I'm going to draw A and B with their tails together. So here's vector A. I'm trying to draw it as long as A is. And I'm going to come back and get the arrowheads on it in a minute. Here's vector B's tail going outward towards its arrowhead. And so now I'm going to put and label these. The parallelogram method says that if you would take and put the tails together of the two vectors and create a parallelogram by drawing a line that is parallel to A off the head of B. So this dat dot that I'm drawing, I'm attempting to draw something that is parallel to A right here. And now off the head of A, I'm going to try to draw a dotted line that is parallel to B. So I'm going to try to do this again. And again, these dotted lines are parallel to their opposite sides, creating a parallelogram. And then the answer to this problem will be from where the tails connect to the opposite side of the parallelogram. So would you look at the answer over here in red. Notice how long it is. Notice its angle. You know, I, I didn't draw this perfectly, but please notice that this red line is about the same length and at about the same angle. So I can either draw one vector and then add the next, next vector to it and go from the tail of the first to the head of the last, or if I can put both tails together. So C, C, and E, I'm going to put their tails together. C goes downward, it's not as long. E goes to the left. Um, I'm going to have to lose probably the figure up above. So again, C goes downward and I mean for that to be a straight line and I believe that C was shorter than E was. So here's vector C. I'm going to go back and look at vector E. Yeah, it goes to the left. So I'm going to draw it to the left, tails together, and it's about that long. And here's its arrowhead. And then I'm going to draw a line that is parallel to C and a line that is parallel to E and I get the resultant of adding these two vectors together by drawing it from the tails where they're together to the opposite side of the parallelogram. This is my answer. It's called the resultant. Um, please notice that by the other method uh, before, we drew C down and then we drew the tail of E to the head of C. That's supposed to be along that dotted line. And then we connected from the tail of the first to the head of the last. So I hope you just see this parallelogram method. Um, you know, B plus D, you know, again, put their tails together. So B goes like this, D goes like this. I'm going to give it a shot by memorizing how they go. So tails together. All right, so B was like this. I believe D was about like this. And then the parallelogram that I'm going to draw 
this side's parallel to the side opposite, this side's parallel to its side opposite, and my answer is going to be right here where the opposite side of the parallelogram is, and this is the resultant of B plus D. For B minus D, I would just draw B and then draw D in the other direction. All right, I'd like to take you to a story and try to give you a feel for how this might work, but it does requ require drawing a scale drawing. Go ahead and read this problem. Okay. A small plane travels 120 miles per hour in still air. It's, I'm going to kind of highlight things, 120 miles per hour, it's headed due south. There's a wind of 30 miles per hour, and that wind is from the northeast. What is the resultant velocity of the plane? So they've given us numbers, and they want us to do a calculation. They want to figure out how fast the plane's going to travel because of this wind, um, which is going to be a bit of a tailwind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish, you know, normally I would be getting a ruler scale, a scale out, and I would be saying that, you know, um, one inch maybe on my scale would represent uh, 30 miles per hour in speed. I picked that because of the wind is 30, so that's why I picked that scale. So if the wind is 30 and I want to draw a vector of it, I'm going to draw the vector one inch in length. If the plane is traveling at 120 miles per hour and I want to draw a line that's headed due south representing the plane, I am attempting then to draw a line that is four inches long as I see it on my screen. I'm going to say that's about four inches long. So this represents the plane headed due south. Now I think I'm going to put north, south, east, and west over here. And I'm going to put a little plus symbol by my origin where I started with that plane. The wind is from the northeast. Here's north, here's east. So, and I probably should have, you know, if that's the origin, I should have east way over here. So think of it as the rectangular coordinate system where here's the first quadrant and here's the second quadrant, etc. So if the wind is heading from the northeast, it's like this. And when they say from the northeast, they mean bisecting this quadrant at a 45 degree angle. But if it's from the northeast, then it's going to head into the southwest. It's going to go this way. So I now need to draw a line at a 45 degree angle off of the west axis that's one inches in length. So that's my attempt to draw a one inch long line. So the tails of these two vectors are together. So again, pretend that we're doing a scale drawing. And now I tails are together, so now I'm trying to draw a parallelogram. I'm afraid I'm, I'm going to run out of screen space. Darn it, I hope you're going to get uh, kind of the understanding of this. This line is parallel, supposed to be parallel to that line. And the resultant answer to this problem is uh, from where the tails are together to the opposite corner of the parallelogram. So the plane was trying to head south, but the wind was coming out of this way, pushing it over this way a bit. So what you would do next is you would measure the length of the line with your scale. So if this is 4 inches, I'm going to say that's about 4 inches. So I'm going to say that my red line is about 4 and a half inches long. And every inch represents 30 miles per hour, and so 30 times 4 and a half is um, 135 miles per hour. So the, tra the plane doesn't uh, travel at 120 miles per hour, it travels at 135 miles per hour because of this wind kind of helping it a little bit. It's a, it's a little bit of a tailwind. It's, it's cross too as well, but it's a little bit of a tailwind. And then finally, you would get out a protractor and you would measure this angle. I'm going to guess that that angle is 70 degrees. So you could say the plane, plane is traveling 135 miles per hour at an angle of 70 degrees south of west, or you could say it's at an angle of 20 degrees west of 
south because this would be a 20 degree angle if this was a 70 degree angle so you could say west of south but I have to know magnitude and direction of the plane as a result of the wind impacting it very good this is our introduction to vectors and drawing scale drawings of them